Hey, welcome to another edition of Table Talk along with my co-host, Pastor Brad Lewis, who is our worship arts pastor here at First Baptist Fordo. My name is Jason Lead, pastor here. We are sharing this time with you, and we're always glad to do that, Absolutely. from our downstairs worship area where worship happens together collectively as a church family on Sunday mornings at 11. You're always invited to be part of that in person or live streaming with us, especially when the live stream's working. Every once in a while, there is an issue with Comcast. We're not throwing anybody under the bus, but sometimes it's not quite as perfect as we would want it to be. In person, wow, it's guaranteed. Live streaming, we do the best we can. In fact, if you've gone back to watch the most recent sermon that'll go with this table talk, you'll find it on our webpage. And Brad's gonna tell you all about how to find that, even though the live stream had a little bit of a hiccup. It does that sometimes. So what is table talk? We share these moments with you every week. It's a way to go a little deeper into God's word. It's a way to explore and ask questions, some things that we don't always get to in the Sunday morning message. We're able to unpack and create some tools and resources for you with the hope that wherever you are, your living room, your back porch room, your bedroom, your coffee shop, wherever you are, that it becomes a place of ministry, that it becomes a place where you have some resources not only to dig into the word yourself, to grow a little stronger in your faith yourself, but to help others do that. So Brad, what are the resources that our friends need to make Table Talk successful today? Well, of course, number one is God's word because that's what we're doing. We're taking from the Sunday mm -hmm. message, which is based in God's word. Right. And we're going deeper, as Pastor Jason said. And so we have to have a copy of God's word. And we encourage you to have your own copy, whether it be a hard copy like we're using today or an electronic copy, which sometimes I use uh, when I'm at home for my personal time alone with God, whatever it is, always start with God's word. And then we have a discussion guide that is created each week as a resource for you. And you can find this in the same place that Pastor Jason mentioned, where you can find our uh, worship service that was streamed, as well as these table talks. If you'll go to our website, fbcfo.org and then if you'll click in the very top right and then look for the one that says watch click on it it will drop down and you'll find a menu and it'll have the most recent sermon series chronologically if you'll click in that sermon series you'll have chronologically the most recent sermon the most recent table talk and of course you'll find this discussion guide final ingredient where we encourage you whether you're doing this for your own personal growth, we encourage you to invest in other people. May it one person or a group of people spend time together in God's word going deeper. Absolutely. And so think about it this way. Table Talk will, in fact, this edition flows right from part three of our series on those better pathways that lead us closer to Jesus. So when you found that series, you'll find this table talk, they go hand in hand. So just think about it as going hand in hand, hand to glove with that most recent sermon. Part three from this past Sunday morning, maybe you've had a chance to watch the full message. We hope that you have, but even if you haven't, we're going to give you some things now that will be a springboard for you to get into the word and dig into this study. We're in first Peter today. So if you have your Bible with you, or we're going to read that text in just a few minutes, go ahead and turn to first Peter in your new Testament and find chapter two. If you need to hit the pause button to do that, take all the time that you need. We'll be here and we'll be ready to lead you. And so thinking about first Peter chapter two, here's really what we're going after. Oftentimes in the church world, we're focusing on attendance. Mm. Man, we love attendance. We keep attendance. We love high attendance. We love buildings and crowds. And, and there's nothing wrong with attendance. If mm -hmm. I said, Brad, how's your attendance? You know, I mean, perfect attendance. We talk about that. Maybe when you were in Sunday school, if you came and you got a little star put in your Bible or yeah, all these, yeah. It's almost like you could pull out a resume and just show, hey, look, Lord, I have perfect attendance. Well, we would say, good for you. Attendance is wonderful. And we, we love people to come, whether they're with us participating online or in person. We love that. And by the way, it's hard to disciple those who are not coming. So mm -hmm. we also emphasize the importance of being together as the church. But if that's the bar, if it's simply attendance, then is there something else missing 
to really help you grow and become more like Jesus. If, if the emphasis is only on attendance, then maybe something is missing. And when we read 1 Peter chapter 2 to you, there's some things that are going to jump out where he says, listen, you're a living stone. You are becoming more like Jesus. You are part of his priesthood. You, in essence, you're a minister. And we'll talk more next time about what that really means to be a minister. But just thinking about attendance, and, and oftentimes we hear people say, well, I need to be in church more, or, and, and maybe you do, or I wish someone in my family, my grandchild or my grandson, granddaughter, I wish they would be in church, and we would say, hey, that's a great place to be. But is that the end game? You know, right. Brad, what do you think right. about it? We were just talking about that. Yeah, it, it, in fact, you mentioned end game um, many years ago. I was a youth pastor, and, and I'm going to tell two quick experiences. The first one was many years ago when I was a youth pastor. Um, I was at one of the Friday football games where some of our students were on the team, were in the band, and, and, and I was down there, and they had a tradition at the end of the game, all the players and their families would gather in the center of the field on the home games, and, and I went out there, and there was one young man, his name was Will, and I'm going to, you know, just mention him, and, and, I, and I approached him, and I wanted, he, he was a middle linebacker, he had an incredible game. If I recall, he had eight unassisted tackles, he broke up a pass, and he had a sack. That's pretty good for a high school oh, yeah. kid. Yeah. And, and, and I wanted to go out there and say, man, Will, great game. And as I approached, he saw me. <laughs> and here's what he said. Oh, Brad, I'll be at, I'll be at church this Sunday. Mm -hmm. Those were his words. And it broke my heart yeah. because he related me to be, I want to make sure you're at church on Sunday, mm -hmm. where I wanted it to be related to, man, I'm investing in you in a relationship. And, right. and from that point, I spoke to my leaders and, and I, I, you know, that was on me, but I said, make sure that the students that you minister to and you're discipling and you're pouring into know that you care about them a whole lot more than you care about them being at church. Yeah. And, and that was important. Well, just the other day, Pastor Jason, mm -hmm. I was in a conversation and, and this person said, you know, Brad, I, I really wish my grandkids... Right would come to church. And, and I thought, and, and I began to talk about this and mention, I said, you know, um, it, it really isn't about them being at church because the motivation for them being at church has to come from deep inside. Right. It's, it's not cart before the horse. If they have a relationship with Christ, if they are walking with Jesus, if they are growing with him, they're going to want to be there. But if we say, well, just come to church, come to church, come to church, you know, sometimes, Jason, I go to the grocery store. Right. <laughs> and the reason why is because I have to buy food. Something within me says, you're hungry, you need food. <laughs> but I don't go to the grocery store just because, you know, I'm going to go down there and just hang out with people because that's the place to go. And all the other people are there. I'm right. just going to go there. And so we need to think of, why do I come to church? And, and even one of the questions is, what are the risks of mere attendance mm -hmm. when it comes to our personal salvation? Attendance does not bring me in my relationship with Christ. Right. Rather, my relationship with Christ causes me to want to be in attendance. Right. And so when we read 1 Peter chapter 2, you're going to see God is building something. And you can go back to a cross reference like Matthew 16, 18, where Jesus says, I'm going to build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. When Jesus uses the word church, he's not talking about a physical building that we occasionally show up to go inside of, you know? That he's talking about a relationship. Right. He's talking about a confession. He's talking about a, an identity that through faith, when we trust him as Lord and Savior, wow, I mean, it changes who we are. That we are part of the church. We are his church. We're part of the body of Christ. And it's, it's identity. It does inform and impact what we do, but it's more about who we are. The hard part about attendance is it's so stressed that you need to be here every time the doors are open is that there's a risk that some people just pull out their resume and say, look at this. All about what I've done is if that makes them right with God. Mm -hmm. And it can be very uh, confusing. Right. We would say, yes, it's so good to be part of a gathering of believers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But let's just read what God gives to us in First Peter as we're thinking about if attendance is the only end game we have, then we are really setting the bar low and we're missing that greater mark of relationship and really being part of and contributing to what God is building. The kingdom of God, the, the people of God, the church, the mission, 
All these things that we hear, we're going to see reference to that in First Peter. So let's just read it. Of course, we have a discussion guide that you'll be going through. We don't hit on the questions as much as we want to set it up for you to be able to walk through these questions. So pay attention to what we read here because it will give you a direction in how you go about digging into these questions. This is the word of God from 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse 4. Peter says, as you come to him, and he's not talking about physical attendance there. He's saying, as you are growing in your relationship with Jesus, he is a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, he's chosen and precious. You yourselves there, that's emphasized, like living stones, the more you're becoming like him, you're being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, and here Peter quotes from the Old Testament, behold, I'm laying in Zion, God says, a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will never be put to shame. So Peter says, the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And he quotes here, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense for those who don't believe. They stumble, he says, because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you, as a believer, you are a chosen race, he says, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. As you read into that, what God is building, and it is spiritual, it is life upon life built on the confession that Jesus is truly God, our Lord and Savior. That as we confess that, God is building us into, you think about what the mortar might be, like the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that binds us together, that you are now part of something that matters because it's God's and He's building it and it will last unto eternity. So we begin to see, wow, a casual check mark of the box that I attended something is not what God's describing here at all. Mm -hmm. It's something so much more, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so... That's what we're praying for you. In fact, Brad's going to have the last word and pray over us. But think about that as you dig through these questions. Am I really connected to what God is building? Am I really committed to it like a minister would be? And am I contributing hmm. to what God is building? Because he sees us as part of this ongoing dynamic. And you matter to him in such a way that he's saying, listen, you can do these things. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be part of what he is building. We pray that you're already a part of that spiritually right where you are. And so, Brad, have that final word. Encourage us, and let's spend some time praying about this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and we hope that even as I, I pray each time that, that these truths that we've talked about, that Pastor Jason has brought in the sermon, in the message, and, and the discussion uh, questions, they'll cause you to... Ask the questions of yourself. Allow yeah. the Holy Spirit to ask the questions. What about me? What about my life? And, right. and even as pointed to say, and you know, I'm going to, you preached it, but I'm going to come behind then and, and get a little pointed here and say, why do you come to church? Right. Or why do you not right. come to church? Yeah. Ask yourself those questions. Do you come because, well, that's supposed to be what I do? Or do you come because you are connected, because you're contributing, because you're a part of what God is doing? Or just the opposite, why are you not? Is it because yeah. your relationship with Christ maybe isn't all that it should be because that will motivate you to be with other believers, to join together and to contribute and to be a part of what God is doing. Yes, yes. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that you give us this truth. What a powerful word that Peter shared with us. And Lord, we pray that you'll make it come alive within us, that we will see ourselves as you see us. Lord, called a, a, a holy priesthood, a generation of people whose lives have been changed 
changed because of Jesus. And Lord, as a result, allow us to see that our mission, our purpose is to be involved with other believers, to be involved in what you're doing, to see your kingdom expanded, and we will choose to be a part of it. We'll be committed to it. We will contribute. We will make it something that is our life, our passion, because of our personal relationship with you. Thank you for that, Lord. Make your word come alive in the lives of those who are listening and watching. We believe that transformation will happen as a result. Thank you, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. One of our biggest goals is, as we are cheering and praying for you in these things, is that we're giving you the resources that will help you just to be equipped for these things. In fact, we're going to talk a lot about what it means for churches to be equipping centers next time. But for now, you can also go to our webpage, fbcfo.org, that Pastor Brad has already mentioned. We've talked about the watch tab, mm-hmm. but go to connect. Yeah. Because when you open up and go into connect, you will be able to send information to us. You mm-hmm. can email us, talk with us, reach out to us. How are we doing? How can we make this better? How's this working for you? How are you utilizing? What are some of the victories What are some of the big moments maybe that you've experienced, some praise moments that we can share in that with you, or just simply prayer requests? Mm -hmm. Uh, We want to be able to be uh, able to come alongside you as best that we can, even uh, online through this experience, um, to be walking through this season with you. So take advantage of those things. We will be back with you again next week. And until we see you then, God bless you.